Beyblade, a game that I'm sure requires no introduction. Beginning in the 90s and soaring to massive heights of popularity in the late 2000s, Beyblade continues to have thousands of diehard fans throughout the world, and even more so now with people beginning to return to it. Now, I'm sure at some point in your life, you have owned a Beyblade. Most of us had a collection of parts. But did you ever really know what you were doing with them? As kids, we would all just put together random parts haphazardly and see what the best was out of the parts that we had, not really understanding why some parts were better than others. That's where this video comes in. I'm going to give you a brief rundown of the basic rules and strategies that are at the core of Beyblade. However, before we start, if you are at all interested in the content that I make, feel free to leave a like on this video and hit subscribe to stay notified about my next uploads. And make sure to leave a comment telling me your favourite Beyblade parts or combinations. It really helps me out and allows my videos to get recommended to more people through YouTube. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's begin with the basic rules for the current format. In Burst, matches go to 3 points. There are multiple ways to earn these points. Your opponent stops spinning, you earn 1 point. Your opponent leaves the arena, you also earn one point. Your opponent separates, two points, with the exception made for certain parts. A round begins with the ref calling 3, 2, 1, let it rip, or go shoot, with the launch happening simultaneously to the call rip slash shoot. Continuing on from this is the Beyblade type's effectiveness triangle. There are four types of Beyblade. Attack, Defense, Stamina, and Balance. It should be self-explanatory what each does, but for clarity, I'll explain anyway. Attack types usually revolve around moving fast to their advantage. Their game plan is to do enough damage to the opposing bay to either burst it, stop it spinning, or cause enough recoil to knock it out of the arena. Defense type's priority is either moving around enough to not get hit, or being able to deflect and outlast attacks that come their way. Defense types usually hope to win by either a survivor or burst finish, because they usually don't move enough to knock opponents out of the ring. Stamina types make up for what they lack in defense with longevity. As a stamina type, your plan of action is to avoid taking heavy hits and try to outlast your opponent with a survivor finish. And finally, balance types are combinations of two or more types. Basically, anything that can be categorized as multiple types are considered a balance type. Balance types typically don't have as great defenses as defense types, stamina is stamina, and offense is attack. Jack of all trades, master of none kind of deal. Because of this, balance types have the highest skill ceiling, allowing the best balance types the possibility of winning any match. Attack types have an advantage against stamina, because of their low friction tips allows them to be easily knocked around. Defense has an advantage against attack types, as they can shrug off big hits and usually take the centre of the arena, meaning it's hard to be knocked out. Stamina has an advantage against defense, not being able to hit hard enough to take recoil themselves, and having low enough friction to outlast them. And balance types have no distinct advantage or disadvantage. Launch Techniques The optimal method of using a string launcher involves gripping the plastic at the end of the string between your thumb and index finger, like this. This allows you to get the most out of your launch without damaging the launcher, as the plastic will simply slip out of your hand once you run out of string. First is the standard, the parallel launch. This launch is performed by holding your launcher parallel to the floor. This launch techniques with high friction drivers cause your bay to circle the perimeter of the arena, and for low friction tips, cause the bay to head towards the centre. Secondly is the banking launch. This launch involves holding your launcher parallel to the stadium's incline. This results in different attack patterns for different drivers. For example, a high friction driver will move in this flower-like pattern, making it easier to hit opponents in the centre. The next two techniques can be used in combination with one of the previous two, depending on the situation. Sliding Launch This launch is the most difficult of the launch techniques to master. A sliding launch involves simultaneously moving your launcher away while the ripcord of such string is being pulled. This results in a more powerful launch and therefore higher RPM. And finally, the controlled launch. Some strategies benefit from being launched slower than usual, either to get a more controllable spin pattern or for spin equalization LED combos. Important tip to remember, keep a close eye on your opponent and what type of launch they plan to do and base your own strategy around it. But be careful because they could easily change their launch technique at the last second and leave you duped. Let's talk parts. Due to the recent resurgence of people returning to Metal Fight, I'll give examples of what makes good parts in both series. In Beyblade Burst, your bay is composed primarily of three parts, the driver, the disc, and the layer. 
Now, there are other parts that make these three more complicated, such as disc frames and the separation of the energy layer into smaller components in GT and sparking. In GT, the layer is composed of the GT chip, weight, and the layer itself, while in sparking, for a full layer, you'll need a sparking chip, energy ring, and chassis. Chassis can also replace the need for a disc and disc frame in the case of double chassis, like this here. In the metal series, generally speaking, your bays are composed of five different parts, with a few outliers. You have the face bolt, energy ring, fusion wheel, spin track, and performance tip. Early Beyblades lacked the energy ring, and later on in Zero G or Shogun Steel, they decided to forego the face bolt and fusion wheel for stone face, chrome wheel, and crystal wheel. In my opinion, the most important part of the bay is the driver, or performance tip, as it is most influential on how your bay will move. A prime example of this is one of the first and best performance tips, rubber flat, or simply RF for short. RF is what your mind should immediately go to when you think offensive performance tip. The friction from the rubber allows it to have a firm grip on the stadium floor and move around quickly, while its symmetrical design gives you a greater deal of control over your bay and helps prevent destabilization. Its burst equivalent would have to be either quick or extreme. On the flip side, stamina types would benefit from having as low friction as possible. Using polyoxymethylene, or palm plastic, will reduce friction similar to how rubber tips create more friction between the bay and the stadium. This material can also be paired with ball bearings and a free spinning plate to create what is considered the best pure stamina driver in the game. Bearing. While bearing is amazing at keeping your bay spinning for a long period of time, it's not very good in any other respect. It has a weak spring and no dash variant, so its burst resistance without using burst stoppers like in Judgment, Lucifer, or the Gen layer weight, it's incredibly easy to burst. Not to mention, the downside of low friction means it can easily be pushed around and potentially knocked out of the stadium. The Metal Series equivalent of bearing would have to be something like BD, bearing drive. At the minute, in Beyblade Burst, good defense types are kind of sparse whereas in the metal days, they were the forefront competitive bays. Typically, for good defense, you'll be wanting something Y to help maintain balance. A bog standard example of a good defense driver would be performance tip D, or defense. It is a low surface area, similar to stamina type tips. However, it's differentiated by being a cone rather than a spike. The cone of the performance tip helps it re-stabilize itself and prevent it from being knocked over at the cost of a little bit of stamina. And... That looks like it'll be it for now. I may take a closer look at more specific elements of Beyblade in future, but... Starting off... That's all you really need to know. This video has been a fairly long time in the making, primarily researching and scripting, so... Hopefully, with this project out of the way, you can be expecting more videos soon. Um... I don't have an outro. Yeah.